Hello and welcome to India Career Center, the one-stop podcast for students, professionals, parents and guardians. In every episode, we will try to deal with a current topic that needs expert advice related to career, career guidance and career mentoring. Please welcome your host Dr. S.P. Mishra to the show and happy listening. Hello and welcome to another episode on India Career Center. Today, uh, the episode is de- going to deal about a topic uh, uh, with respect to reading habits. And uh, I myself uh, have been part of this uh, wonderful initiative uh, by a Pune-based organization called CTQ Compound. Uh, of course, it's part of CTQ. Um, and we have the founder, uh, Mr. Harish, uh, today with us to discuss about this organization. And of course, through this conversation, we will also learn about Harish and his journey, uh, his personal and professional journey. Uh, Mr. Harish, thank you so much uh, to be part of this conversation today. And uh, through this conversation, we will learn about CTQ, CTQ Compound and all your initiatives and more importantly, about your personal journey. And I am really excited to welcome you on to this, uh, onto this conversation. Thank you for giving your time. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Mishra. Thanks for having me here. Uh, you know, it's it's a privilege to be on this podcast. So, uh, hoping to have a good, uh, you know, next few minutes <laughs> talking about various uh, things. Right. So, uh, to start our conversation, I think uh, I would love to learn more about yourself, uh, starting from your younger days, uh, your schooling, education and the early professional career until you started CTQ. So take us through your journey uh, to understand more. And of course, through this conversation, I hope a lot of youngsters who are watching us uh, will resonate with your story and something wonderful will come up uh, in their own life as well. Sure, thanks. Uh, so um, I was born and brought up uh, in, in Maharashtra. Uh, so um, I did all my schooling from a place called Varanna. Uh, it's near Bhusawal in the Jalgaon district uh, in Maharashtra. It's a very small place. Uh, my father was working in the ordnance factories. Uh, so though I was born here in Pune, uh, you know, by the time I was uh, old enough to join a school, my father got transferred there. And before me, they actually had a culture shock because, you know, they were in a, in a city like Pune and this was the 80s. So when they went there, there was no TV, um, you know, the newspaper used to come the next day. And uh, my father used to be, you know, he was a big uh, info, info war, right? Uh, so he used to listen to radio commentary all the time on BBC and all that. So he, he himself thought that he was, you know, suddenly transported to some other world. Uh, so parents were very worried about, uh, you know, my education. Uh, my sister did, was in a convent, uh, a reputed convent in Pune till grade four. So they thought, yeah, she's, she, she seems to have set uh, her foundations right but this boy you know he's starting his uh, you know junior kg from this place so they were worried uh, so they made sure that uh, you know i had a lot of uh, reading content and you know back in the 80s that was the only source of knowledge uh, that we all could think of right um, so there was never a dearth of books my father would always you know go on you know, good code, travel to cities like Pune or Bombay uh, for office work uh, and make sure that, you know, there would be a lot of books that would be there uh, available at home. He himself had a huge collection of books that he, that we had carried from Pune to Varanga. Uh, so that was always there. So books was always a big, big part of my life. And I was in a Kendriya Vidyale. So, you know, we used to have all these uh, they used to call them co-curricular activities. Uh, so every second uh, week, I used to participate in some competition or the other storytelling, elocution, speech, debate. Uh, so it was always about, uh, you know, gathering more knowledge and uh, books was, was the primary source uh, back then. Um, reading whatever, you know, you could lay your hands on. Um, and then as I think most people in India in the 80s and 90s, when they grew up, I think it was primarily Doordarshan and, you know, the whole NCR, TCBSC syllabus. Um, and in the 90s, suddenly, you know, we had cable TV and you know, 
a lot of things sort of opened up uh, but because we had read uh, uh, quite a bit uh, you know it was not like uh, we we could finally see what we were reading about but mm-hmm. it was not an alien world so that was like uh, you know something i think that was probably the first time i uh, realized the value of whatever i had been reading back then uh, because it was not like a shock uh, you know when we started watching those things in the in the 90s um so you know finished my 12 then came to pune for my engineering um uh, i was at college of engineering pune and uh, they had a big uh, quizzing uh, culture at uh, coep and uh, because i had been reading so much and my father always used to you know encourage quizzing he would never uh, answer anything directly he would always pose a question back to me uh, so we had to always sort of you know it was like solving a cryptic crossword all the time uh, so that that uh, sort of you know helped me think on those lines about uh, how to search for you know the answer never sort of getting a spoon fed answer uh, but always finding my way to the answer uh, so that was something you know which which my uh, you know the father inculcated from a very young age uh and my mother uh, you know used to read a lot of stuff from telugu magazines and you know story books uh so again that was also there uh, you know as part of my sort of grounding or grooming whatever you want to call it um so when i came to college here uh, you know quizzing was like a a natural uh, next step and this kind of quizzing was very different from kind of quizzing that we had done in school which was primarily regurgitation of facts um here it was more of the cryptic crossword you know style of quizzing where you know there were some clues uh, lying somewhere in the question you had to you know find them work them out and then get to the answer um so again the whole so we had a quiz club in uh, college called the boat club quiz club uh, so bcqc was a big part of my life uh, in college and uh, ramanand my co-founder at choose to think uh, you know was my batchmate at uh, coep and he was you know uh, he's, he is a great quizzer uh, so that's where we met uh, and uh, again you know because you're part of a quiz club uh, you know the currency that you deal with is how much you know uh, mm-hmm. and again back then it was about you know uh, trying to capture uh, as much knowledge as you can we used to go and visit you know the british council library and every possible you know source of a book a used book new books is all about reading all the time because that could be the only sort of competitive advantage that you would have on others um now we realize that yeah you know we, we used to look at life uh, it's it's such a narrow lens <laughs> we definitely missed out on a lot of other things while growing up but that was good uh, in terms of uh, you know growing up and and the whole foundational part of it Uh, and then i yeah, post engineering i did my mba from mdi gurgaon uh, passed out in 2004 again at mdi i was part of a quiz club we you know went to uh, a show called uh, university challenge on bbc world we were you know semi finalists uh, this was hosted by siddharth basu and then uh, post uh, you know mdi i worked in it product and services companies in various Uh, consulting and project managerial uh, roles infosys pmc software cognizant technology solutions um 2010 to 13 i was running an online book library service called tender leaf so again reading and books uh, you know came back uh, in in my life again um so you know that was uh, in till 2013 and 2000 end of 13 early part of uh, 2014 is when ramanand uh, I, i mentioned him earlier about uh, you know him being a great quizzer at uh, bcqc so ramanand and i um, started choose to think um, and again at that point we did never really sort of figured what we are going to do we literally you know do that ikigai diagram of okay what are we good at uh, you know what will you get paid for uh, so we said let's do something with you know learning and engagement and Uh, you know quizzing was never um, an end for us it was always a means to something else um, so we thought you know how can we actually share what all we have learned uh, with the world um, and and that's how we sort of you know started some small things uh, we ran a bunch of experiments and we we recently finished you know uh, 10 years of choose to think as well 
uh, and 2019 is when we started the uh, CTQ compounds. So that's what that's that's where you know we sort of got introduced to each other. <laughs> Great. Uh, I think reading, as you mentioned, it was a great influence from your father. Uh, and and of course, your mother, as well, you said, she used to read uh, Telugu uh, language uh, books and things like that. So reading as a habit, I think is a great, I mean, any habit rather is uh, is the influence of your environment. I think today, uh, most of the young children are missing out on that. And to a, to a large extent, I would say it is also the parents who are reason for it. I think at home, if uh, the parents are not having books to read, rather they are clinging onto a mobile screen or or or, or whatnot, um, then how can we expect uh, uh, young children to pick up uh, reading as a habit? So, what do you think about it? Yeah, I think that that's um, uh, that that's true to a large extent. It is um, you know. Whatever you expect people to behave, you have to first start modeling that behavior yourself. Um, um, and and um, while that is true, you also need to figure out what is, where does the interest lie of uh, individuals. You can't really force somebody to read something because then it gets, you know, very boring and uh, it, it's like a punishment. You don't want, uh, you know, people to read uh, as if they've, they've been punished. Uh, in my case as well, uh, you know, I, I told you about how we moved to this, you know, place where we used to get the paper the next day and all of uh, all of that, right? Um, so I apparently, uh, you know, would never uh, speak or you know, be comfortable with English, and my parents were very worried because you know, my sister you know, was in a convent and uh, you know, she used to speak excellent English and. I would just refuse to speak in English apparently. Um, so somehow they figured out that my interest lies in sports. Uh, okay. So they just got me a subscription of the Sports Star. Uh, initially, I used to just flip the pages, you know, look at the photos, but uh, you know, slowly I got interested and I, I developed a, a habit of reading uh, to the point that you know my father used to <laughs> used to love reading, being the first to read the newspaper. Uh, would get irritated because I would then go and you know start reading the paper before him. Uh, so, <laughs> in fact, this whole trick of how they got me to uh, you know start reading something in English by getting me something of interest uh, has actually been cited in a PhD thesis by uh, one of my English teachers uh, who written a you know whose doctorate uh, was about you know how to get children interested in reading. Um, so I always you know actually. I recommend the same thing to people that you have to find what is of interest to people. Uh, because if you just say that, you know, no, no, the reading is very important and you have to read, people will, especially children, will feel that they're being punished for it. Uh, so that is not what you want. Uh, you will have to and expose them to, you know, subjects that uh, they are interested in. And that is where the role of a library comes in. Uh, yeah. Because what happens today with, uh, you know, with, with what we see on, say, OTT channels or, uh, you know, when we buy books, uh, it's a very narrow set of topics that you are uh, being exposed to. Um, it's, it's what you've always known is what you get more and more of, right? Uh, whereas when you used to go to a library, you know, when we were children, we used to go to a library, we used to just roam around in the library and we would pick up a random book. Uh, an author that we've never heard of, uh, a title that we've never seen. We would look at the back pages, we would flip through the you know index and say, oh, this sounds interesting, let me take it. Um, majority of the times that choice would bomb, uh, you know, the book would be very boring. Uh, but you would have got exposed to something. I, I always you know tell my kids that you know the, the, the most that I learned about the game of golf was from a Nancy Drew book. Uh, yeah. about mystery right uh, so so that is my first exposure to the sport of uh, golf uh, so you know that that's how it is uh, you know you you start reading something and uh, you know one thing leads to the other uh, but that sort of serendipity was uh, engineered in a place like a library uh, whereas now if you subscribe to a newspaper or a magazine or if you know, you're, you're subscribed to something online also. Uh, 
uh, you will get only those kind of topics. You have already chosen that these are the things that I'm interested in. Uh, so there's a very low chance of anything new coming into your feed. Uh, and that's what I think kids are also struggling with uh, these days because they just don't have that experience. Unless somebody is naturally, um, you know, very deeply passionate about a topic, then they go deep uh, into that. And they, for, for that today, there's, you know, there, there's no limit to how deep you can get because of internet. Uh, but if you have not found that uh, interest, uh, then it becomes very difficult to sort of expose uh, children or even adults for that matter because you just you know restricted to your area of work you're just reading more and more of you know what your friends are sharing on whatsapp or you know twitter or whatever uh, so then that's what leads to this whole concept of an echo chamber and so you're just going deeper and deeper into that same same world <laughs> yeah i think the modern algorithms are all meant for that i think uh... Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, what you intend to see, that only keeps coming. It, that's the unfortunate part. Uh, so before we dive into how the CTP compound actually works, uh, let's uh, try to understand first uh, how this idea came up that, uh, okay, something like CTQ, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the expanded uh, word is choose to think. And, yes, uh, think with a Q. The thing with the queue. So, uh, tell the backstory of this. How how this came about? Yeah. So, Ramanand and I are big fans of this book called "Made to Stick" uh, by the Heath Brothers. Uh, it talks about you know what makes communication sticky, um, and uh, you know we we, were, we thought okay, this is something which we want to do, and you know, we want people to think. Uh, but then we said we don't want people to be forced uh, to think. We want it to be uh, voluntary and questions are a big part of it. So just, you know, may had a play of words and we said, okay, let's call it choose to think. And one of our customers, you know, started calling us CTQ. So we said, yeah, this is, sounds nice. So let's, let's just stick to CTQ instead of CTT or, or something else. That's how it became CTQ. And uh, we, we've done a bunch of things at choose to think. You know, we, we, uh, today, what we do is we, uh, help companies and teams and individuals stay uh, continuously future relevant. So what that means is, um, you know, for companies, it is about the culture that, uh, you know, they uh, want to develop and they want to build uh, the values that they feel are very important for their culture and, and for their company to stay relevant. How do you reinforce this uh, among people, right? Uh, that is something which uh, we work uh, towards. So we essentially create a, a calendar of interventions. Some of them are asynchronous, some are uh, synchronous. Um, you know, we, we, so companies have these collaboration channels like uh, platforms like Slack or Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. So we actually run a channel on their collaboration platform. And uh, that's where we create and curate a lot of content around their culture and their values. Um, and you know, we do uh, synchronous sessions where we get people together to share, you know, share the folklore of that company, mm -hmm. uh, which is otherwise very difficult to capture. Uh, so, you know, like the conversation that we are having, we will have some external expert come in and we will talk about, say, how should people think about AI? Uh, you know, how should they use chat GPT in whatever they are doing? Or we'll get somebody from the army and you know, talk about leadership and you know, what what were what were the principles of how they trained. Um, these are things that uh, you know kind of things that we do as part of uh, you know choose to think. Uh, we also help leaders sort of come up with new playbooks for leadership, especially in this new world of you know remote to work and you know working with younger generation, working with people who have very low attention spans, uh, who are not really committed to working for a company for, you know, a, for decades or years. People are thinking of quarters these days. So how do you deal with, you know, this kind of uh, workforce? Um, so then leaders also have to, you know, rewrite their entire leadership playbook that they have learned, uh, especially people who are maybe in, in my age group, you know, 35, 40 plus, 
who have grown up in a very different world and now the kind of you know teams they are leading the people uh, are very different so how do they handle these kind of things uh, so these are the kind of things that we do at uh, you know at, at uh, choose to think and uh, you know before this you know we we used to do a bunch of uh, experiments product services uh, we, we were on the first people to work with hbr outside of harvard uh mm-hmm. when hbr launched a new product in india called as hbr ascend um they were looking at you know some interesting content uh, around their articles that were repurposed for this uh, product so you know we worked with hbr to create these caselets around uh, you know those uh, articles so we used to do a lot of you know these this kind of interesting things around learning content knowledge and we used to have uh, you know a lot of subscriptions um we used to have a blinkist subscription we used to subscribe to hbr as a company and what we realized was everyone in the team back then they were most of them and we used to also do a lot of quizzing work so people were generally you know quite well read they all had their own niche interests and all that but we as a group were not um you know putting these subscriptions to good use is is what we felt um and we also had uh you know da- taken up some courses on habit building uh, so we said okay let's this try something let's see if we can all read together mm. uh, and we can we read these kind of things which are uh, not just of our interest but they are required for our work right um, so we you know once i think this was to early 2019 end of 2018 is when you know ramanan proposed this idea that oh, i want to you know run this thing within the company where uh, i will post a link every day and we all have to read and you know there is this whole uh, micro uh, habit routine that uh, professor bj fog uh, talks about um, so we said let's let's follow that where there will be a trigger there will be a routine and we all have to you know sort of give ourselves a reward as well um, so we said okay let's do it and it was optional so you know everyone in the team joined and we started reading and uh, these were articles um, you know somebody in the team was interested in food so he picked up a, a, a book summary of uh, something which was based on salt uh, i had no interest in it but you know because i was part of that i i read that and you know the, suddenly I, i knew more about salt than uh, i i could ever imagine uh, so a lot of such things were done and what we realized was we were a, a, able to sort of build a habit build a routine we were all doing it together as a group and we were really having fun so we started posting about it on social media uh, on twitter saying oh today we read this today we read that and people seemed uh, curious they said oh, this sounds interesting you know can we be a part of this we said no we can't sort of share this uh, you know subscription uh, with, with anyone else because the company subscription and we still not sure what we are doing so please hang on um so around you know april is when we thought okay think we have an idea of you know how to build this uh, habit and you know doing it as a group uh, so let's just you know let's just propose something and see how many people actually sign up uh, so we said we will uh, you know curate articles from all over the internet uh, and um, you know we want to give you uh, you know some interesting content to read uh and a lot of people said oh the kind of things that you come across is not something which we you know generally come across because you guys are so well read and you know you're going lot of going down a lot of these rabbit holes uh so can you share all that content with us we said okay let's probably that's what you know people are interested in so we said okay we will do this habit building thing habit building was big for us um so we said okay let's let's do it this way and uh, we put up a, a blog post and you know, we thought if not more than 10 people sign up we will just you know close this um and you know lo and behold we had 24 sign ups <laughs> before we realized so i said okay this seems to be <laughs> you know something of of interest to people um so we said because you know we're trying to compound knowledge and all of that and uh you know benjamin graham talks about compounding knowledge so we said okay let's talk about let's call the city compounds and uh, 
you know let's uh, let's go to the periodic table uh, to come up with uh, you know group names so the first three cohorts were called hydrogen helium lithium um, you know and uh, it was all about habit building back then uh, 2019 uh, so people would sign up they would be part of a cohort uh, they would read uh, one article every day uh, so what we were doing essentially was that you know everyone understands the value of reading right yeah uh, that's that's not a, a problem or that's not a question uh, for anyone everyone knows that yeah this is something which is good it's like going to the gym uh, nobody will say no no i should not go to the gym right everyone say will say yes yes if i have to be healthy i have to you know, do my exercises uh, but it's about the operationalizing bit uh, mm-hmm. which becomes a challenge uh, so if i share 180 articles with you today uh, you know you will be excited and you'll say wow great you know you will go read 10 articles because you have time and you have you have very high motivation because suddenly you've got this you know treasure trove of links right um, but then you'll run out of time today right you'll say okay let me do it tomorrow um, but then tomorrow you know the ball will drop uh, maybe you'll do it tomorrow the day after tomorrow you'll forget about it or you know because you've not formed a routine out of it um, so that is what we said okay out everything that can be a um, that that can stop you from building this habit and uh, let's make this as easy and let's add some you know social pressure and, and all of that so because it is about habit building we used to have this idea of uh, daily strikes so if you know in a group of 10 somebody did not read the article then the whole group would actually get a strike um, you know, three strikes and the group would actually lose out on one day of, so so no article on a day. Uh, so people would, you know, make sure that anyone who's, you know, lagging behind, they'll keep saying, oh, please finish the uh, article, uh, you know, before uh, the 24 hours are over and, and things like that. Um, and the other thing was each article used to be from a different topic. Uh, mm-hmm. So what we promised was that it will not take you more than 15 minutes. Uh, that's a promise which is which is still true. Uh, because if it is more than 15 minutes, even when you want to do it, you'll say, okay, this is a very good article. Uh, I'll read it when I have more time. I need some space and bandwidth. So I, you know, park it. And once you park it, it is done. Yeah. Uh, you will not get to it. Uh, so I said, let's not give anything which is more than 15 minutes. And, uh, you know, let's, let's actually push them to areas which they are not usually sort of, uh, you know, coming across, right? So there's, there's an article around about the seed war, there's an article about the history of Africa, there's an article about circus, all, all kinds of topics, right? Uh, so that's how we started. Um, so over the years, what has happened is, you know, people have told us that, uh, you know, it's not that much about habit building. But it's about the curation uh, of of the articles, uh, so which is why we've now moved away from this whole you know daily strikes and group penalties and group rewards and all of that. And now people are part of Telegram groups. Uh, you know, we, we send out an article every day. The fifteen minutes thing is still true. Uh, so every article can be you know wrapped up within fifteen minutes, um, and they share takeaways on the group and and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's moved away from that positioning of a habit building thing to more about uh, compounding your wisdom by reading daily. Um, so we have people, you know, who signed up on day one who are still part of CDQ compounds and uh, they read every day. There are others who read five articles on a Friday. Um, there are others who read two, three articles in a, in, in, in a go because then they now know there are no strikes or uh, penalties uh, so so they know that there's a steady sort of stream of uh, articles that they can uh, dip into um, because otherwise that's that's where you get stuck uh, you say that yeah you know we see this around you know uh, january 1st every year right uh, it's one of the most common new year resolutions oh this year i'm going to read a lot <laughs> Uh, so first few days you read and then you know it, it suddenly tapers off because you feel oh I need to go and search for an article if there's an article I, I would read um, or you know the other notion that uh, that we've seen is that 
lot of times people think of reading as reading books only right mm. um, so if you if you think about what reading is is doing for you right it is about expanding your world view and becoming wiser um, if if you look at that then book is one of the channels uh, of reading there are so many great articles there's so many newsletters that you can subscribe to in fact there are podcasts also that you can you know listen to these are all different ways of you know knowing more learning more and expanding your world view uh, so if you think of all of this as part of your information diet right uh, then you don't have to be bogged down by saying that oh i have read only four books this year right that, that is i think you're being too unkind to yourself if you say i have not read enough books if you have read all these if you have done all these other things then you are still you know doing yeah. well um so that's where people sometimes get stuck so i said okay please disabuse yourself of that notion reading can be in, in various ways as long as you are doing, doing it deliberately as long as you're not reading you know, something which is just about the current news cycle because all those things like how you were saying earlier right it's like it's controlled by algorithms um so they just want to get you agitated they're not going to help you in the long run um so we stay away from the current news cycles uh, whatever we curate and send is usually not usually it's, it's always uh, you know time independent in that sense it's timeless right uh, you can pick up an article which is written in maybe you know 2003 um, most of it will still be relevant and Uh, you know you can read that you get to know you, you more about the world you are living in sometimes it's also about the how good the article is written um, you know which also becomes a, a reason why we uh, pick that article um, and and yeah because you are staying away from new cycles generally more sane in life <laughs> <laughs> yes and uh, i mean since you have now gone through 5 years of uh, ctq compound so from 24 subscriptions from day 1 how things have been looking up now uh, what has been the story in terms of the growth of sub- subscription and as you said i think you have moved from positioning it as a habit builder to more creating uh opportunity for people to expand their horizon i think that's that's right. how you position it now so right. in terms of uh, subscription uh, how you have been able to uh, because in the last five years uh, you you i mean you as a brand ctq as a brand uh, must be facing much higher competition from the other social media channels so the the competition is much tougher today so with that how you are able to bring people to a, such a sane uh, habit yeah yeah it's it's, it's a very you know uh, interesting question uh, actually um, so so one you know sort of uh, anecdote that i always talk about when i talk about ctk compounds is the the five years we also you know went through the global pandemic right uh, so there were people in 2020 and 21 who used to write to me that uh, you know ctq compounds was the space which brought some sanity in my life when i was you know sitting in the hospital waiting when my loved ones were in the you know icu and i was waiting outside these 15 minutes would actually take me out of that world and that's when it suddenly struck us that okay this is the kind of role that we are playing in our uh, in, you know in the lives of our uh, subscribers that uh, it is bringing some sanity in their world right uh, because uh, you know they they getting they getting a chance to get away from you know the 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 troubles that they were going through and it was it was big at that point right uh, because they knew that this was a safe space they had their you know friends to lean up lean on um, the topic would be something which would take their mind away uh, you know from whatever they were going through and yet was actually helping them grow right uh, so that is something which uh, you know always I, i i remind myself and the team whenever we talk about city compounds that see this is this is what we are doing Uh, don't just think of it as you know uh, you know about curating content but this is what is happening in our subscribers worlds um uh, so yeah that that's that's sort of sums up 
you know what we have now realized is the value of you know ctk compounds in our subscribers uh, lives right uh, somebody had once asked me this question that uh, oh you know my friend is asking me that um, you know he can subscribe uh, to netflix for some order 400 500 rupees and you know you are charging 10k for 6 months uh, how is this uh, a, a valid uh, you know choice even so i said see netflix uh, you know they, they consider uh, sleep to be their uh, you know like competitor right um, and uh, we actually want you to stop within 15 minutes of reading because we really care about you and not us as uh, i'm not trying to sort of you know compare myself with netflix as a brand or a company or or you know our purposes or, or whatever but the fact remains that uh, you know yes uh, there are you know today you can algorithmically actually pick up uh, you know articles from from different sources and and all of that right um, you know what's going to happen with the algorithms because you know there will be the sameness of articles and, and all of that uh, you will get the articles which have been voted or you know voted as yes by others only uh, you will not get anything else and and basically you'll get articles which are confirming to your world view uh, so you will not learn anything new you will not expand your world view um, which is why we feel that you know the curation by hand or rather human curation that happens in our case uh, you know still is is an important role and because we don't have any allegiances to worry about right uh, you know we are not uh, worried that oh we have to actually have an article from a, a publication mm -hmm. uh, because we are looking for good content good articles it can be you know on a on a mainstream media's website uh or uh, it could be you know your personal blog it could be a journalist's personal blog uh, uh it could be anything right um which is what our allegiance is to uh so that means that you know what you will get is uh, truly a, a diverse uh, sort of uh, you know world view that we can realistically offer Uh, will there be limitations yes there will always be limitations because there will be maybe 10000 other good sources which we don't know of mm. uh, if somebody points that out to us we read and you know if this is a great article we add it to our list and you know uh, we will sharing it uh, with our subscribers but yes there are other sources which we are not even aware of right uh, so those will never be part of our subscribers feeds but uh, as soon as we come to know of it we will you know if it is a good article if it is adding to your world view whether it confirms to our individual opinions or or not we it will uh, be part of uh, you know part of the curated list right um, so that is very difficult for anyone else to uh, promise because you know they will have someone to uh cater to right it will either be a sponsor it will either be uh, or or somebody who's paying for it um so yeah that that then becomes a challenge for others uh so that i impartiality or objectivity i think too strong a word uh but uh, being able to offer the diverse uh selection i think is a strength uh, that we have and at the end of the day we are humans so we will make mistakes uh, so you are also going to be kind to us uh but if it was a if, if it was an algorithm i don't think you will be that kind to them <laughs> yeah. that kind of that algorithm so how do you choose this i mean what is the process you follow you said you you curate uh using your team so obviously they they use their own intellect uh so but then is there a broad plan that okay if somebody is enrolled for a six month uh, period then Uh, we will follow this sequence if somebody has uh, gone in for a one year subscription and uh, this is going to be sequence is there something like a plan or it is something which uh, which keeps iterating and improving by itself right so the first 6 months now is more or less settled uh, because we have done this for many number of people now almost a few hundreds of people have gone through that first 6 month uh, season um uh, so that now has 
articles from different topics and uh, you know difficulty level of the article is also something which we sort of keep varying from time to time mm-hmm. there'll be an easy read some will just be a lot more dense uh, because just more cognitive load to try and understand those uh, so you cannot send that kind of an article every day because then people will feel oh this is like you know this, this takes a lot of time and effort so i can't do this every day uh, but maybe once a week you are okay it's again think of it that if you look at the equivalent in a gym you can keep you know trying to uh, max out your repetitions of you know the dumbbell every day yeah right? one day you will want to really push yourself but the others you want something medium sometimes you want it very light also Uh, so it has to be a mix so that for the first 6 months it is uh, more or less sort of sorted and and tried and tested now uh, so anyone who joins now goes to the same sort of content because season 1 is is same and then they get they join different you know seasons uh, once they decide to uh, you know continue to renew their uh, subscription so like i said we have people who, who have been with us for the last 5 years now um so so we keep curating content for them and uh, some of them you know they keep giving us feedback oh these are good articles this is okay you know not so great sometimes some articles just become you know either they go beyond uh, i mean behind a paywall or sometimes uh, they just bring down that article uh, so some of those things then we need to keep replacing from time to time but uh, the the primary sort of you know model of curation is to make sure that we are you know trying to cut across different themes uh, and keep coming up with new sources uh, of of content as well and uh, different people keep adding to that list of of uh, you know curation so that it doesn't become one or two people's editorial sense right uh, mm. it can't be just you and me sitting and deciding that oh we like this article uh, it has to be slightly larger but again not like a completely crowdsourced thing as well uh, so there's a sweet spot that we are aiming for mm. okay so just thinking loud i mean though i had not planned to ask this but uh, while discussing uh, what i what comes to my mind is that uh, while um, slightly older folks uh, probably will still like to read a article every day but the younger ones i mean those who are on their instagram and just enjoying the 10 second uh, videos or, or reels or whatever uh, for them to hook on to the system would you like to think that uh, if you make um, somebody to read the articles instead of just sending across the article uh, a a audio version of this article will do you think at some point of time ctq ctq compound will do uh, in 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 basically to target the younger audience i mean this, this is something which i am sure you might have thought about earlier uh, as well i guess what do you think about it right so we've actually done a couple of uh, you know variants of these where uh, you know we've curated podcasts uh, you know there was uh, there's a website called as curio Uh, c u r i o which uh, does audio versions of articles uh, so we have done you know a compound with uh, you know curio where all the articles that they have converted to audio uh, that was like the pool from which we selected some articles and and you know ran this again this was in conjunction with them uh, a lot of our uh, reading subscribers uh, took the curio subscription as well uh because that was something which they wanted to add uh, so we understand the value of of doing something like this today we don't have the uh, technical capability of of doing that but i think with chat gpt and you know all the llm models uh, converting text to audio should not be that much of a problem um again we is that a possibility definitely yes uh, would we be interested in doing that probably um, are we having any concrete plans no uh you know so somebody you know comes to us and says okay i'm going to work on on this um and can we combine for so we'll probably be you know open to you know consider something like that uh happy to work with some intern who's uh, you know who wants to do this as a side project or, or something like that um having said that uh we um you know 
or have or we have other variants of our compounds as well right uh, so we have things like future stack we have things like you know digital trends uh, for people who are slightly uh, older who have not say been born and brought up in a digital native world like the instagram deals and all for them to sort of just understand what is happening with blockchain and things like that right so we have compounds like these where it's a mix of reading as well as sometimes there is a podcast sometimes there could even be a video uh, so if the idea is that yeah i want to understand future trends uh, so not everything has to be a, a written article which has to be read um, sometimes there will be a video that we will share sometimes there will be a podcast that we will ask people to listen to um, because that then sort of also frees us up in terms of giving more kinds of uh, media um daily reader uh, right now is about reading articles um but yeah again there, there's no reason why we would want to close ourselves to uh, you know having that as i mean when i say that the, the audio version of some articles um that's not something which you are close to we'll be happy to consider that yeah because i think most of the international magazines i mean whether it is economist or the other right. i think they also have a, a pdf version as well as the audio version i think right, you can right. actually have one and also listen to that uh, so right. probably going forward for younger generation probably that may be a useful thing to look at yeah. yeah and and not just younger generation even in terms of accessibility right yeah um, yeah. i think even you think of it in terms of accessibility um, it's 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 a great thing to have right and uh, uh the the model which you follow is you you actually use telegram as a, as your base uh, for sharing the information any particular reason why you have stuck to telegram so the primary reason was earlier we when we started it was on whatsapp um, so it used to be a group of you know 10 or 12 people because of the cohort uh but then when we we realized that sometimes there can be a privacy issue uh because there will be somebody you know we've had some sort of superstar celebrities uh, as part of our uh, you know subscribers right so, so uh, we don't want them to suddenly worry that oh now my phone number is accessible to somebody uh so at that point that was a, a big reason for us to switch to telegram the other thing was telegram also uh, used to allow us or other, i mean it said does uh, at that time it was not available in whatsapp uh, to do things like polls um, so mm. we used to do quizzes around you know stuff that you have read uh, so that was much easier on telegram uh, to do uh, which is why so privacy and the additional features is why we switched over to telegram uh, i think this was 2021 or maybe Twenty twenty one. So you are a bit apprehensive, uh, you know how people will respond to this. Will there be, you know, dropouts? But people were fine. Uh, so yeah, our apprehensions were. <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, obviously you got used to that. I think uh, that. Yes. Which is why it is still going on. Yeah. yeah. Right. So in terms of the value added services, uh, I mean, if for the. audience which probably have not heard about ctq so would you like to give the, all the entire range of uh, value added services what you are offering from ctq yeah so choose to think a um, lot of our work is in the corporate space uh, you know lot of teams uh, and uh, learning programs for managers and leaders um, so that is what we do primarily at uh, choose to think um uh, part of our retail offering is uh, ctq compounds uh, so that's what you know individuals can uh, subscribe to uh, we also do a lot of work uh, for offsites uh, so if you know you're organizing an offsite and you know you want to get more strategic value out of that offsite uh, then what are the kind of interventions that uh, should be part of the offsite and how do you design the offsite Uh, you know which even which session should go when what can we proceed the session with uh, so that people are in the right frame of mind uh, otherwise what happens is these offsites are usually 
you know, they end up being very boring and you know, there's one CXO after the other coming and, you know, delivering long, uh, you know, sessions which just get tiring mm -hmm. and cognitively very heavy. Uh, so how do you, you know, do this in an interesting way, but not, uh, so we won't go and do, you know, fire walking and juggling and magic and all that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, whatever we'll do, it will, it will always be about, uh, you know, stimulating the mind and getting people in the right frame of mind. So even if there is a bingo that we'll play, it will be, say, a bingo of your company culture values, right? Uh, so that that's uh, how we do it. Um, so a lot of our work uh, at Choose to Think uh, is primarily for teams uh, and uh, you know leaders, uh, and the individual you know retail offering is CTQ compounds. And within CTQ compounds, as we spoke about, there's a daily reader, then there is a future stack, there is a weekend reader. Um, we also have something called as ridiculous, which is for children. Primarily, you know, children of our subscribers uh, who want these kids to start getting used to reading nonfiction, uh, mm. you know, 10 to 13, 13 to 15, uh, you know, ages. Uh, so it's, it's short articles, uh, you know, just getting them, just getting them started on nonfiction. Otherwise, nonfiction usually for kids at that age is mm. just very boring you know, content. And, and when uh, you say uh, short, uh, so uh, typically these are all like five minutes read or six. Seven, yeah, yeah, not not more than ten. Seven minutes is, is typically okay. what we aim for. Um, okay. So yeah, so ridiculous is one other. And why why is this important. name ridiculous? So uh, again, I, I think it's it's from the Harry Potter world that there's some connection uh, to okay. that. Is is how the team decided. Uh, it is R E A D I K K U L U S. Uh, yeah, that that's how it is spelled. Uh, so yeah, there's a Harry Potter connection out there. I have not read Harry Potter, so I'm not very conversant with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. Yeah, and uh, the, how how is that priced? I think since most of my uh, target audience is actually uh, the parents of young children and things like that, uh, so. Would you like to explain about the pricing as well, especially for the children, this particular reader have a reading habit? Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, most of these uh, are in the range of say three to four k for three months, and uh, you know, seven to ten k for uh, six months. Um, that's that's the the list price. We usually have some sort of, you know, campaign that is running. Uh, I think you would have heard of uh, City Compounds on mm. Amit Verma's podcast. So, you know, uh, most of the subscribers who come in from there end up using a discount code that he shares. Right now, because we, uh, you know, turned five City Compounds, so we are, you know, actually running a campaign for this month, uh, that is May 2024. Uh, when anyone who you know subscribes gets a seventy five percent off, uh, this is going to be a one time thing. Uh, yeah. We're not going to do a seventy five percent off again. <laughs> <laughs> At least not for the next five years. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we do one. keep uh, we do keep running some you know campaigns because a lot of these things that we've seen are trigger based. Um, yeah. So you know it will be during summer holidays or Diwali. You know somebody wants to gift it to a, a, a colleague or to you know, my friend's son, uh, or it will be around, you know, December is when, because like I said, everyone wants to start with a, a new resolution of reading. So they, they do that. So we try to give these, you know, discounts around that time. Um, I don't think it's the discount that sort of, you know, gets people to uh, sign up. It's, it's, it's just that it pops up, uh, you know, when, when people are reading, it's just a trigger. Um, so you need to be doing this around that time um, and and then people will uh, you know sign up that that's what we've seen so yeah this is more of you know may is not really uh, otherwise a time when we give out discount but uh, may was may 5th is when we turned 5 uh, which is why we have the 75% discount going on which you know you can actually share uh, with with sure. all the listeners of this podcast sure. I'll, I'll put it on this uh, so note there Yes, yes. So the code is Wiser24, W-I-S-E-R 24. Uh, okay. That gives us a 75% discount. 
uh, valid only in may <laughs> fantastic and uh, again this is one more question which i never thought about but uh, at some point of time would you also consider uh, creating curating content which are in indian other languages i mean primarily you have done only english right. i don't know whether you have any thoughts about this as well uh so that's been one of those unfulfilled uh, ambitions of us for a very long time actually uh i think it it's it's primarily a function of our own incapability of not you know being able to curate content from other uh, languages we always wanted to do some you know quizzing work also in other languages we've done some in hindi and marathi where we got somebody to translate our quizzes um but back then we were not very you know very uh, confident of actually pulling this off in other languages uh, same thing with uh, you know the, these articles also uh, we will need somebody uh, you know to sort of be that uh, subject matter expert um, whether those articles are you know written well uh, are they factually correct and, you know how are those because we will not have a view on something else mm. in some other language i think that's that's a shame uh, we take complete sort of blame for that and uh, should not be like that uh, we should have something like this uh, for you know regional languages for all languages actually you know, one of the things that we had you know run some time back uh, used to be called iconic india mm-hmm. um, which is about uh, you know teaching kids about the iconic aspects of india or various things or roads and architecture and you know foods and and all of that um some of we we you know we put a lot of effort and uh, created some great content we created a course out of it and and all of that but some of never resonated with the target audience that we were looking uh, at uh, sort of shelved that uh, so but it's a passion project that um, we do feel that you know it should see the light of the day sometime um so yeah again regional languages yes we know there is you know great content out there uh, we wish someone does it if not us uh, mm-hmm. or someone you know combines with us to to actually pull that off okay great uh, so harish before we leave uh, what would be your future plans I and mean, how do you see ttq and ctq compound let's say five year or 10 year down the line what what's new <laughs> so we we probably you know done so many different things new things that uh, you know i i think it's it's very difficult to answer that in our space you know, things are changing all the time uh, some principles will remain the same uh, you know about focusing on things which make sure you know help you stay relevant but what will be the nature of it and uh, you know what will be the delivery mechanism all those things i think will change um, so we don't have five 10 year plans uh, at at choose to think uh, given the space that we are uh, working in uh, so it's very difficult to answer that question um, we keep uh, you know doing uh, some internal exercises uh, like you know pre mortem so we actually did Uh, an exercise around what will kill choose to think so <laughs> we know what <laughs> will make sure choose to think does not <laughs> survive <laughs> but uh, what are the things that that uh, you know we will do there there's no definite answer to that um, this will be the space that we will be in uh, it will be about curation it will be about learning it will be doing things in a very timeless manner um, it will be both about learning you know classic stuff as well as uh, staying in touch with what is changing uh, it has to be a combination of both because we can't keep running after the shiny new thing all the time uh, because there are you know timeless principles also that that you need to be aware of um, we don't know what how you know learning will change in companies um, is it going to become you know more and more personalized which is sort of focused on what you are trying to do we don't know uh, we are always looking at you know what's was changing and we try to sort of uh, you know build that into what we are doing um so yeah we will hope to do that 
<laughs> okay, great. Uh, uh, and another question which I never thought of asking, but then it's prompting your answers are prompting. Uh, uh, so we have, uh, I don't know, lakhs of uh, schools across India and I don't know, we have 60, 70,000 colleges, universities across India. Uh, if some of them approach you to, to, to be able to be the knowledge partner, so to speak, um, through your program, uh, would you be interested or would you be open to that as well? Yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to you know explore how we can work together. Uh, we've done some work with schools and colleges in the past uh, to sort of understand you know what what are they looking for, and and we'd be more than happy to explore um, any way in which we can you know do something which is is going to benefit uh, students and and you know, younger people. Always up for it. Great. Okay, uh, so thank you, Harish. I think uh, it was fantastic talking to you and understanding more about you as well as CTQ, CTQ compound. And uh, though I had a very small stint of uh, relationship with CTQ through the daily reader program, uh, it was fantastic. And uh, and uh, I personally feel that reading, daily reading, I mean, this is something which I feel and I do that myself as well. Uh, it does help expand your horizon and, and 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 the more variety you do, the more better it is because you learn to uh, acknowledge and accept uh, different worldviews rather than sticking to your own. So um, so any final words from your end before we close? Uh, I think you've, you've summed it up very nicely, Dr. Mishra. <laughs> it's it's about reading every day and uh, making sure there is a variety uh, so you don't get into an echo chamber of, of uh, sorts. So that's something which is very important. Uh, I All I would say is, um, you know, while, yes, reading every day is very important, don't be too unkind to yourself. Uh, give yourself, uh, you know, some break. Uh, you know, what we would rather is that you have you read for say, you know, 300 plus days in the year, um, you know, instead of, you know, pushing yourself for 60 days and burning yourself out. Um, so everyone is running a marathon. Don't think of this as a sprint. Uh, so there are great advantages of doing small thing, but, you know, doing it repeatedly, doing every day. Uh, so if you can find 10, 15 minutes of reading, uh, you know, just just do it, uh, and yeah, consider all kinds of sources as valid. Uh, you know, sources of adding to your worldview. Uh, so don't feel too bad that we've not read you know, fifty-two books in the year, and uh, you know, don't don't worry about those streaks that people put up on Instagrams and <laughs> Facebooks of the world. Uh, so yeah, just just do it regularly, and. Uh, Keep learning, keep keep learning. I think that's that's the only message that I would give. Fantastic. Thank you, Harish, uh, for being on our show. And I'm I'm sure some of uh, my audience uh, will get inspired by this conversation and take up your C uh, CTQ compound, uh, one of the services. Thank you so much. And I'll share definitely the uh, the discount uh, details what you mentioned and. Uh, Hope to catch up with you soon again with another topic. Thank you so much. Sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Mishra. It was, it was a pleasure and a privilege. Hope you enjoy this episode. We sincerely wish you could take something from our conversation today and be able to apply it to your life in a positive way. We value your feedback. This can help us improve our future episodes. So share your thoughts to serve you better. If you want us to focus on a topic which you think is of importance, let us know. We will share our expertise in future episodes. So, see you soon with a new topic and help you in your career journey.